pretty much useless to the company. So at, at that point in time, we, we, uh, if, if there's no agreement on the financials, on the, on the action that the management should do in order to put the financial statements, uh, we might have to also just disengage from the engagement at that point in time. And if we don't it, disengage, if it comes down to giving an adverse opinion or disengaging, uh, oftentimes it ends up in, you know, a disengagement at that point in time. So if auditor decides that the misstatement is or may be the result of fraud and that the effect may be material, the auditor should then obtain audit evidence to determine whether material fraud has occurred and the effect. So we're going to dig down into the fraud uh, to see if it has a material effect. And, and notice our focus here is, is really on the financial statements. It's, it's not necessarily on the fraud in and of itself. It's on what is the fraud, the nature of the fraud that we want to dive into is what's going to be the effect on the financial statements because of course our goal here is to make an opinion on the, the financial statements and the reporting of it not necessarily as it would be in say a, a criminal type case or if we're auditing from a forensic type of situation to to look for a criminal type of act or you know fraud type of activity we we will pursue that but notice where our aim is our goal is that is that trying to see what the financial statements and if the financial statements are presented uh fairly that's our primary purpose that's what we are engaged to do think about implication to other areas of the audit so is this, if there's a fraud here does this have implications elsewhere and one way we might do that if it's if it's lower management if it's lower employees that committed the fraud or something even if it's substantial then the question is well what other types of areas do they have influence over possibly not many because of internal controls because of separation of duties if the fraud on the other hand is in upper levels of management again that that then gives us pause we're saying well now it's possible if there's fraud at that level of misrepresentation or misstatement then it could be more pervasive because they have more influence whereas lower level people have restrictions due to separation of duties so we want to think about what, what, what does this fraud have a result on other areas of the financial statement and the credibility of the audit evidence that we have in the financial statements as a whole? Discuss the issue and plan to approach it further with the appropriate level of management, at least one level uh, above those involved in committing the fraud and with senior management. So if we detect fraud, then of course we're going to discuss it with someone. Most of the time, the fraud is employees and, and oftentimes some type of, of beneficial to the employees, some type of theft or something like that. And if that's the case, then of course we talk to the proper level of management, possibly a one step removed, not the level right above, but the one above that and then upper management. And again, we, that hopefully is something that, that can then be detected at that level and taken care of uh, within the organization and not give us you know questions about the integrity of the upper level management hopefully which would be more problematic suggest the management consult with legal counsel so we're always going to basically say hey you know our our objective here is to see that the financial statements are reported uh, and free of material misstatement you have if if you have a some type of fraud or illegal activity happening here fraud being an illegal activity you could you should consult with legal counsel and pursue it further uh in that direction our responsibility of course is towards the financial statements and the reporting of them think about uh withdrawing from the engagement now if the if the fraud happened at a at a lower level again it's it's something that an employee committed fraud theft even if it's substantial we go to the upper level and we can say hey, hey the upper level management didn't have well-designed internal controls or whatnot this fraud took place it shouldn't have taken place but it's not lack it's not the fact that the upper level of management were somehow involved or somehow manipulating or deceiving if again however that the fraud is in the upper level of management if we perceive that we're getting documentation that uh it, you know was altered in some way or there's some type of fraud involved in the representation of the financial statements what we're engaged to give an opinion on then we might say hey that we're gonna we're gonna remove ourselves from the engagement and again, that's not something we want to do because we waste a lot of time to do that. Because it, so we want to be able to determine this at the front end. Who, what type of clients do we want to pick up? Do we want to pick up clients? We want to pick up good clients with integrity, so we don't uh, run into this problem. And but if we do, if we go halfway through the audit and we say, you know, I don't have any faith in the integrity of management at this point in time, then uh, and then at some point we'd have to consider just just withdrawing from the engagement uh, as well.